the video with math and physics one with Goss. Today, we're going to be taking Schroeder's equation and using separation of variables, which is a branch of partial differential equations, and get the time independent Schroeder equation, as well as that time component. And in the next video after that, we're going to solve that time component and look at how they figured out, how they came to the conclusion that this uh, time independent Schroeder equation is equal to E times the spatial component of the wave function. So let's basically start. So here I have the most general form of the Schroeder equation. And this example, we're basically going to assume that x, our, our vector, which is a function of um, x, comma y, comma z, is only a function of space. And that's just for simplicity for the Laplacian, which we'll talk about in a second. Don't worry if you haven't seen it. And we're going to now assume to have and get the time independent short equation, we have to have this condition, that the potential of our quantum particle is only a function of position. It doesn't change with time. Let's basically start. Um, I'm going to basically write the bottom first, the uh, Laplacian. And the Laplacian is partial squared, partial x, plus partial squared, partial y squared, plus partial squared, partial z squared. So in our case, because we only have the r vectors a function of x, we only have this term here. Okay. And um, what we're going to apply is now we've applied that the potential is only a function of x, as right here. And we've applied this to all the wave uh, functions. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take a postulate. And the postulate that we're going to take is that we can um, basically represent the wave function, which is a function of both x and y, as a function of position, which is lowercase i, times a function of time, which is uh, phi. And we do this, and this is a common practice in partial difference equations, to try and take our partial difference equations, which is a function of two variables, and try to manipulate it in a way so that we can um, create two separate difference equations, which are our only function of either x or t. Um, so don't worry, I'm going to go very slow on this. A lot of people who take this class have not done partial difference equations, and it's, it's, not, uh, it's not so complicated, and it will make sense. So don't, don't worry. So let's start. So I'm going to basically take this here, and then uh, instead of that, I'm just going to go boom right down here to the bottom, and I'm going to substitute this in. I'm going to ignore this, this notation, this uh, function notation. Uh, psi is the function of x, phi is the function of t. Um, so we're going to have here minus h bar squared over 2m. Now we have the Laplacian. We only have the x coordinate, so it's going to be um, partial squared, partial x squared. Now we're going to substitute this as this, but we said we're going to take the postulate that it's um, two functions time each other. So we're going to have phi. Um, I'm actually going to leave this notation here because uh, till we apply the derivatives so it can be uh, more clear. Now we have our potential, which is now only a function of x by assumption. And we're going to have uh, here x and phi t is equal to i h bar partial partial t phi of x, uh, sorry, psi of x times uh, phi of t. So what we have here, and for those who haven't taken Calc 3, when we take a partial, so we're taking here a partial with respect to x, which means we're going to hold any other variable as constant. So when you take a derivative with respect to a constant, so we've had like k, which is a con let's say 5 times x. If we differentiate this, this would be 5. So we're holding basically t like as if it was a 5. So it's just scaling um, psi up. So And the same thing with this. This is with respect to t. So we're holding this constant. All right. So in this case, we're holding this constant. And in this case, we're holding this constant. Let me make this clear here. OK, so let's now apply the derivatives. So we're going to minus h bar squared over 2m. Um, that means we can bring this in front of the derivative, just like we could have done with the 5 and the 5x example. phi times t. And then in the next step, we'll drop the uh, derivative notation squared times five uh, phi plus v of x psi of x phi of t is equal to i h bar phi partial partial t of phi of t. Now I'm basically going to go through some notation and this is just for future videos because um, our future you know education because it's very common. So it's very common when we have um, derivatives and we don't want to write this 
this term every single time. We write spatial derivatives when they're applied to a function, like so. So this would be the spatial derivative once, spatial derivative twice. And when we have time derivatives, we use dots. So this would be like this for one. And if it was two, it would be double dot. But in this case, we have uh, a derivative once um, with respect to time. So um, we're going to continue with this notation. I think it's important for people to see and get used to. So let's continue. So we're going to get minus h bar squared over 2m phi. And uh, since we applied the derivatives now, we're going to drop this function notation. So we're going to get psi double dash because it's the second derivative plus v, only a function of x. Uh, then we're going to have phi and psi times psi is equal to i h bar phi then, um, sorry, psi. I was confused these two. So whatever I'm writing, just assume that's what I'm, I meant to say. Okay, so now we have this written out. What we're going to do next, we're going to take a capital phi, and we're going to divide the entire equation by it. Right? Dot of phi. And we're going to do this, try to manipulate it. It's very common. You just try dividing right away when you're solving PDEs. Uh, you just see if it works. So I see here that this is going to cancel with this. You can't necessarily say the derivatives are going to cancel and be 1. Um, but here we see that um, I'm going to actually just cancel them here because this is applied to the whole function. These are going to cancel with these. And then this is going to cancel with this. So let's see the outcome now. So what does this mean? Well, it means that since these are functions of different variables, for all values of x and for all values of t, this must be equal. Which means what? They have to be equal to some constant. So I'm going to give an example because I don't think a lot of people understand this when they first learn it. So let's take a function f of x. And let's take a function of sine. So let's say it's equal to sine. If we differentiate this once, so I'm going to use this notation. Remember, that's the derivative with respect to x one time. That's equal to cosine of x. If I differentiate it again, right, I'm applying d over dx. And then here, I apply d over dx. That's right, And that's minus sine of x. If I divide it, right, I get a minus 1. So if I divide uh, this by this, Right, which is what we're seeing here, I get a minus one. So it's some constant. But the more important point about this is that if I say that the left-hand side is some function of x, and it's equal to the right-hand side, which is some function of t, they must always be equal for all values of x and for all values of t. Which means that if they're always the same value for all values of that variable, I can just set them equal to some constant and then figure out what that constant is. And that's what we're going to do minus h bar squared over 2m times phi second derivative times psi. I hope I said psi that time. It's psi. Plus v of x is equal to some constant c. So this is x part. This is time part. I'm going to get i h bar phi is equal to some constant c. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just times both functions by their uh, what they're divided by just to get the function out of the denominator. So we're going to times this by phi, and we're times this by phi. Sorry, this by psi, and this by phi. So this is what we have. Now this c, this constant, turns out to be the energy, right, of the system, the Hamiltonian. Um, but yeah, so. That's the end of this video, and I hope it was useful. So in the next video, in part two, we're going to actually solve this equation. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me, and stay tuned.